All right, so now this is your girl's recording. Let's go ahead. Let's get into the next damn reaction. Uh, I hate the fact that it's where you're talking about the same person. It is y'all try to put me as, you know, y'all, y'all, y'all love calling me sexy blue. We just went through a whole edit from somebody, somebody within Simba's community. And when it is that I find this, whoever did this is going to get banned. Oh, so you think that's funny? All right, cool. So shout outs to Blackie Speaks. I was saying Blackie Spears. I'm messing up the name. You know what I'm saying? But Blackie Speaks. She did it again. Okay. Let's get into this damn video, y'all. Let's do it. Now, guess what just happened? Well, let's just say that she did it right in front of her face once again. What's going on with you today? Hope you're staying blessed out there. Hope this first week of 2024 has been good for you so far. In this video, we're going to revisit a story I recently made on the rapper Sexy Red. Some of y'all might have seen that video. Others might have not seen that video. I made a video on this story involving the rapper Sexy Red and a ballet teacher who was kind of calling Sexy Red out on social media and a bunch of parents because the little girls in her class wanted to listen to Sexy Red's music. And we all know what Sexy Red's music contains. It's a bunch of raunchy and very explicit and inappropriate lyrics that children, regardless of if it's a little boy or a little girl, should not be listening to, period. Now the criticism, if you've seen that video that I had for Sexy Red, was the fact that she was essentially encouraging little children to listen to her music, knowing how inappropriate it is Hear me for out though, audience. please. And she did so by responding to this ballet teacher who had called her out and these parents were letting their children listen to her music by saying, girl, shut the hell up and play my records. That's what she said. So that was Sexy Red's response. And personally, I thought what she did right there was very evil work. Because the way I look at it is, yeah, you're a grown adult making music for other adults, but to go out of your way by responding to a story like this in the way that she did, to me, it signifies that she knows exactly what she's doing. She obviously knows that her music is very inappropriate for these little girls who were asking their ballet teacher to play her inappropriate records during the class. With that information in mind, she was enabling these little girls to listen to her music. Now, obviously, it's on the parents, and we're going to talk about the parents because we got some smoke for the parents, okay? But let's just say that as an entertainer, you do have some time type of responsibility because you have all this influence and when it comes to someone like sexy red she's literally one of the hottest things on social media right now like she's getting so much press right now it's unbelievable the entire industry supports her some of the hottest rappers have literally not only coast i'm glad it is that you blurred this now because in the last video you had a whole bunch of stuff going on gang <laughs> Behind her, but they've also jumped on records with her. And like they say, right, attention is the greatest form of currency, especially in this generation. And the thing that kind of made it worse for me was like, you know, we're talking about a ballet teacher who was a woman, okay, a young intelligent woman was sharing some of the experiences that she's had as a teacher and then sexy red seeing this clip of this young woman speaking about all the things she was talking about in the way she was talking about these things obviously she was concerned for a lot of these young girls and she posted this clip on social media as a way to vent about the frustration that she was feeling now she did this just for sexy red to brush her off and say girl shut the hell up and play my records personally i thought that was very ignorant now let's just put a halt on that for a second and let's actually move on to what happened the other day because we just saw a replay of this situation once again so let's talk about it mm. so essentially what happened the other day is there was a oh, clip I that was posted this. on twitter I and the clip this. in question was of a bunch of young girls dancing and singing along to sexy red's records specifically it was the song rich baby daddy which is a record by drake featuring sexy red and SZA. and this is the chorus to the song which sexy red is rapping this is what the song's hook says bend that ass over let that cookie breathe shake that ass babe. hands on your knees hands on your knees hands on your knees shake that ass for drake now shake that ass for me so this is one of the biggest songs from Drake's most recent project, For All the Dogs. It has over 134 million streams on Spotify. So going back... I literally said this the moment that I heard the album. I'm like, yeah, this this is going to be a TikTok sensation song. I like, I heard, like, the first time hearing the album, I heard the song. I said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is going to be it. Sure enough, I wasn't wrong when it is that I said it. But let's continue. Back to the clip in question, okay? It was a clip of a bunch of 
little girls these little girls are and i think this is important they're young black girls at what looks like a birthday celebration of some sort i don't really know but we essentially have you know one girl she's holding like a microphone and she's leading this performance of sexy red's song and they're all like dancing singing along to the song's hook and they're all singing the hook now i will say this though the one good thing from this that i see is that they're actually not saying any of the curse words i don't know if that was intentional like was that maybe orchestrated by the adults who are recording i have really Most no clue likely, i want to yes. say that it probably was orchestrated by the adults because you know we're talking about children and they're cognitive development isn't that far ahead to the point where if they hear something like a song they're not gonna intentionally skip over the words because they're children they don't really know any better now the video aside and we're gonna get to sexy red's response in a second because she had something to say about this the video aside i thought the caption to this viral video was pretty interesting because the caption was if the party ain't lit like this don't invite me and then one two three four five six seven looks to be 17 to be precise 17 faced with tears of joy emojis i gotta whisper this one but this tweet right here looks like it was written by a certain agency who flooded the black community with cocaine in the 80s say no more now sexy mm. red ended up uh, responding to this viral video i wonder what sexy red said well let's take a look at her tweet here it is. Oh, like a w w w, like you know, like oh. So that's what Sexy Red said, which tells me that she knows exactly what she's doing. I mean, she's literally doing it in front of our face, like we don't know what the hell she's doing. So before we get to Sexy Red, we do have to talk about the fact that these children would not be listening to this had it not been for their parents. So let's talk about that. Okay. So these parents right here are obviously doing a horrible job at being parents and i don't know what it is about these clips that i've seen on social media like i've seen a couple of these clips of children dancing to you know specifically sexy reds music and i'll be honest with you guys i don't think that's a coincidence at all i think this is by design and i wonder who's pulling the strings that's what i'm asking like who's behind this now that's me asking that question with my you know conspiracy theorist tone on another note though a big part of me thinks this is just due to clout chasing parents because there's a lot of parents out there who are willing to sell out their children for some likes and views and interactions on social media by having them dance to this dysfunctional music and so they record their children dancing to let's say like a sexy red they post it on social media knowing uh. that it's probably gonna go viral because there's gonna be a lot of people like us you know with some common sense who are gonna be like wait a second that doesn't look right why are these little girls not only dancing to but singing along to this rapper's music whose entire mo is being as raunchy and as vulgar as possible like okay so let me ask this question for my chat because i hear to everything it is that he's saying now uh, it becomes a problem when it is you start telling a parent that you're a bad parent, unless it is to something that they actually are doing that is like, you know, of this essence. Are we classifying parents? Because again, the last time it is we reacted to a video like this, I showed you guys a whole interview of, with Little Kim back in 1996. That was on a whole talk show when her album was out and it was a 12 year old girl that, you know, was sneaking to listen to it and within the Walkman. So are we cla are we gonna classify this as part of that of uh, the bad parenting? And I have to put it in quotation marks because again, I'm not a parent, so I can't necessarily put too much of my judgment into this. I'm I'm trying to be mindful of this without being contradictory. But in the same problem, it, if we're gonna have the smoke with sexy red, then we have to have that smoke with almost every other artist it is that's out there that is kind of raunchy. And we have to classify that for both, you know, men and women that's out there um, in, in that. We have to classify it for, for, for that because it's, there's a bunch of people that may not be as much as Sexy Red or Sukiyana, but they are quite similar because of the fact that within music industry, sex sells. So if we're going to have this smoke for her, then we're going to have to have this smoke for a lot of other people that's in this community too. Um, but I did see this video of the little girl's dancing i will i will say that at least they wasn't cussing i will say that but am i surprised by this no a lot of people was in like i said 
the last time as I reacted to this, people would like they was having her like sexy red perform at schools. So so yes, this this song has resonated so powerfully to like to children, you know. But um, if we're going like, but my point is, is if we're gonna have the smoke with sexy red, then we're gonna have to do this with a lot of other artists that parents listen to. I think it is that parents are mind they, I won't say mindful, but they are aware of the fact it is that they you know to what it is they doing. If a parent encouraged the behavior, then I'd say that's bad parenting. I look at it straightforward. What does the parent, what does the parent do to mitigate the situation? If they're actively monitoring the content scene or done and and just don't care, then that's the difference. Okay, fair. That's fair. Like that don't make any sense for the people with common sense, that is. There's, of course, going to be another crowd who stands behind us and they might say something like, well, when we were kids, we used to listen to this other music which was as bad and as filthy and as vulgar and as explicit, so it ain't nothing wrong with this, right? Not realizing that the reason why they think this is normal is because they were presumably brought up in a very dysfunctional environment where a lot of this inappropriate content and material was pushed in their face constantly and a lot of that for them eventually became normalized and so they're not going to bat an eye when dysfunction is put in front of them because that is their normal and it's really sad because a lot of these parents and a lot of these grown people who think like this who eventually end up having children they end up letting their children consume a lot of this extremely inappropriate and explicit content so this entire conversation that we're having obviously this is on the parents and at the end of the day as much disdain i might have for sexy red and everything she's doing when it comes down to it yes she might exist in the industry and she might make certain type of music that a younger audience shouldn't consume but the reason why that younger audience is consuming this music in the first place it's obviously because of their legal guardians for anyone who's still not aware I'm, I'm sure you are aware of this but we do live in a generation now that's being raised by social media specifically TikTok. okay and there's a lot of parents out there who've absolved themselves of the responsibility that they have by putting a smartphone in their children's hands so they don't have to sit there and actively be present in their child's life this sexy red story aside for a second i mean guys this is something that we see in so many other places now what we're seeing in this story right here this is just a symptom of a deeper problem that's going on in society right now how Correct. come we're seeing things like children putting their lives at risk through let's say a tiktok challenge that's going viral this is happening because a lot of these kids they're not being monitored by their parents and a lot of times the parents are not only encouraging this behavior but they're also enabling that same destructive behavior i look at it and i say that's children raising other children because these are not adults at all and one of the theories that i have or one of the things that i've come to understand would be a better way to put it is that there's a lot of people out here who have children now and they were never planning to be mentally present in their children's lives either they were not planning to or they're just simply not able to be mentally present because not every human being is even able to do that which is why we have the saying not everybody should have children because you know here if we're gonna say that so here's the thing here's the thing if we're gonna say that um then you have to get on the, the people it is who are doing the act of what creates a child in the first place. Now, our parents, on the other hand, although it is they did not have social media as much as it is that it is pushed now, but they were in real life situations to where it is a deeper problem. It is a, it is a, a huge problem within our community um, to the things it is that was exposed to as kids. Now, this realm, can, this rabbit hole can get very deep um, and it could go into different places depending on what type of things it is it was exposed to as a child. Um, and yes, putting a child with like a smartphone nowadays is like, you know, it's, a, it's like, oh, well, they're going to be quiet. They're going to be on their phone. They're going to be watching whatever, whatever the case may have you and stuff like that. Cool. Yes, that is a monitoring thing. But it is also... It's kind of like the same thing with like, oh, like, oh, what am I, how do, I don't understand how my child started cussing. This is, and this is because you do it. You know what I'm saying? Your child is a reflection of the parent. Everything it is that they have learned from, they've learned from the first set of teachers it is that they have, which is the, the parent or the parents, plural, plural. So, I mean, we would have to go, that, I guess that's an, another conversation for another day to how much of like the rooted problems and what it is that we're bringing from one set of parents they go ahead and they're doing the act and not necessarily ready for what comes with parenting and what comes with that level of responsibility while going through it. And then it's just like, well, 
it, parenting isn't an exper experimental um, experience, unfortunately, especially it is with the first set of kids. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of trial and error when it comes down to having children. What's going to be the right way, the right way is everybody, you know, I'm using that loosely in this sense. Um, so unfortunately, yes, there, there's going to be a lot of good and bad and what we think a difference of good and bad, but let's proceed forward. There's a difference between the older generation and this new generation now back in the day before let's say the internet if you chose to have children at the very least you had to be mentally present with them because if you're not reading the newspaper and your child doesn't have an iphone they can be entertained by while your mind is completely somewhere else what exactly are you going to do to pass the time well you're gonna put your focus and your mental towards them the thing that's going on now however with the digitalized era where we have iphones i.e. smartphones, TikTok, and all these other things that are obviously a distraction from real life, you can, as a grown adult, decide to have children, and then you can put a smartphone in their hand and mind your own business as they're minding their own business. And that takes away the responsibility from what the parent is actually supposed to do. And that kind of brings us full circle to this specific story right here. These little girls dancing to a rapper like Sexy Red's music, which is very inappropriate for children is a direct result and direct symptom of parents absolving themselves of the responsibility that they have as parents that's the whole thing that's going on here i think the saddest part about this is the fact that there's a lot of people out here man who think that this is a joke they think that this is funny and i don't even blame the people man because this is the result of all the conditioning that they've been putting into our minds man part of the allure of these social media challenges and these viral social media videos where you got people mostly kids dancing to let's say like a song is to keep everything as fun and as lighthearted as possible so the parents they're not going to think twice about letting their children partake in all this and then the children are kind of going to look at this as like a fun little thing and so eventually we get to a place where the children want to partake in all these fun and portrayed as innocent because challenges slash parent. dances, right? Like they want to dance to a sexy red song, which contains explicit, vulgar, and inappropriate lyrics. And then the parents have to come out and tell them, no, you're not going to dance to the song. Who do you think becomes the enemy in that situation? Think about that. The parents, obviously. And this is why it's so important to not let your children be exposed to this stuff in the first place. Because at a later time when they've familiarized themselves with this type of content and they want to partake in these dances, you're going to become the enemy when you have to tell them, no, you can't dance to the sexy red song. Why can't I dance to the sexy red song? All the kids in school are dancing to the sexy red song. Ma, stop being a hater. Let me dance to Rich Baby Daddy by Sexy Red. So evil work. This is, this is what it is. At the end of the day, don't think these public figures right, and that's these a part of being a parent are going to look out for the end. That's a part of being a parent. I mean, even though growing up within the, the 90s and the early 2000s, you still had like, you know, little Kims, the Trinas. You know, you had so many different types of female rappers that was spitting that, you know, that vulgar rap. But there was a level of conversations it is that my parents had to have with me to be like, okay. You know, like the radio version, cool. Most of the time when it comes down to like with rapping as it is anyway, there is a censored version and then there's a uncensored version. And the censored version is usually have to be with switched words. Um, so it could be radio friendly, be played on there. So you can get more streams, more, you know, more listens and stuff like that to the songs within itself. But even then, you know, whenever I could really remember with my dad playing that I was very aware of like who Biggie was, Tupac, Little Kim. I, I was fully aware of who these people were as a, as a kid, but I, there was always censored songs because of the fact is like, you know, if you're going to be listening to this, is it, like I said, you got to lead by the example. You are the parent and that is the part of being, being the parent. You'll be the villain, but later on in life, that, that parent may be your child's Silver lining between life and death. Correct. Exactly. The interest of your children. Because for them, like Sexy Red in this case, every time somebody presses play on her record, she gets paid or actually maybe not because I'm sure she took a big ass advance, which means her record label gets paid and Correct. she will maybe recoup. We will know yet. We will know yet. But it's a win for them. They don't really care about if the content that they're feeding your children are good for their mind or not. So parents, y'all got to do a better job at this shit, 
man, don't be having your children dancing to this woman's records because this is inappropriate. You guys got to keep in mind, man, she's trying to conquer the mind of these children. That's what she's doing right here. And that's why I say this is evil work, okay? This is very evil work. She knows what she's doing and the parents are following suit. Very sad. I hope people can wake up to what's going on because this is not going to get any better. Debate. We got to protect the innocence of these children, Let man, because I think Go into this, details about that. Okay, what's going on right now, I think so this I is answer. very freaking dark. Anyway, any thoughts on this story right here? Sexy Red did it again. If you made it this far, can you do me a favor and just press like, okay? Just press that like button. It really helps the video get promoted in the algorithm. And that tells me that I'm doing a really good job at what I'm doing here. So press like, I would really appreciate that. Also, if you're not subscribed, definitely make sure you're subscribed. What do you guys think about this topic though? Any thoughts on this uh, Sexy Red story? Any thoughts on some of the things that I spoke about? Curious to hear what you have to say. See you in the comment section below and I'll catch you on the next one as well. Peace. This just reminded me of something. Hold on. This just reminded me of something, right? This just reminded me of something because I, want, I, I, I talked about this over the weekend and the fact that I deleted the tweet pissed me off, right? So since it is that we're going to end out on this, I got to be mindful with her, with her comments as well when it is I put up this picture. Because her comments is usually nothing but corn, as it is. I gotta be very mindful of this. Okay, all right, cool, 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 cool. So I seen this, right? I seen this pic, and I said, "Wow, you know, she looks actually decent." Okay, niggas was in my comments talking about I gave her a backhanded compliment, and I'm like, I want you to be. She put herself together. I want you to be very honest, be very, be very transparent. Be very transparent with me. A lot of the times in the essence it is that I see her, I'm like, my girl a little rough. You know what I'm saying? But she actually, like, you know, she looks very well put together. I like this for her here. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to diss her in any form of way. Babs, would you believe people try to strong arm me on what I said? as a backhanded compliment or Ari, what do you mean by that? She looks, she looks for once. What do you mean by that? Exactly what the fuck I said. I don't know why it is that people try to strong arm the level of an opinion or try to make it more bigger than it would, it needs to be, but she looks decent here. She looks really good here. Yes. That's sexy red. Yes. Yes. After what it is we seen of this, Come on now, you can't, you can't fucking, you can't fucking be fucking serious. Like, be, like, are you high? There's no way it is that you about to sit there and be like, you know what I'm saying? This, this could, this don't even look like the same person. I'm like, damn, you know, she looks presentable here. Oh, you, oh, you just being me. You just hating this, this, and this. Come on now. Put those two pictures together and then, you know what I'm saying? And then tell me which picture it is you like the most. Stop playing my fucking emotions but it is a backhanded compliment. It's not meant to be a, black, a backhanded compliment. She really does look good here. She looks very, I like this. This is me being honest. If that comes off backhanded, then it comes off backhanded. But it's like, what do you want me to do? I can't give a compliment to her when she, she finally, like the team finally puts her together. You know what I'm saying? She looks better here. I have to call it to what it is. Even if somebody was to say that to me, it's just like, all right, you know what? Yeah, I, I put that time in to actually look, look decent. You know what I'm saying? Like at the ball. At the ball, what I look like and what it is that I look like now. You know what I'm saying? It's like, damn, are you put yourself together? I'm not going to take that as a backhanded compliment. But I get what people are saying. But, like, don't, don't sit there and try to strong arm me on what it is that I said and try to make it bigger than what it needs to be. It's not. It's not. You know? Like, that, that pissed me off. Like, oh, don't do that, bro. You know? Next time it is I see that, I'm going to stay on my damn business. <laughs> Babs went ahead and quote tweeted the same thing. So I fuck with Babs. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know? But I dead ass thought you you was doing something different when I looked at the screen. No, that's that's the same girl. But this this topic is a bit is is a bit interesting. It, it's a bit interesting, but it's the, you know. <sighs> But parent, the parents is always going to play, play the major part within these type of situations because, again, this is a deeper issue 
they're just parents in, in this point. A lot of this is like what is being pushed out within music industries. We have these conversations all the time, but <sighs> it's an interesting topic. It's an interesting topic, but I'm curious to see what it is that you guys have to say within the comments. Shout out to y'all in the chat and shout out to you at home. I will catch y'all in the next video.